When it comes to entertainment, there are two types of shows that exist. Shows that tell a cohesive story and end on a good note, never to be renewed again, and shows that never seem to die, being forced by either corporate or creative means to keep running until the IP is unrecognizable from the original. In terms of the latter, they are usually done in one of two ways, spin-offs and reboots. But are these ever received well? Do they serve a purpose other than trying to milk a once popular or nostalgic IP for as much money as possible? Are they even good? When looking at it from a general point of view, reboots are normally not very well received, or at the very least often glanced over as something uninteresting. One example that comes to the top of my head is when Fairly Odd Parents got their first reboot in the form of a new show that tried to do what Nick does best. And that's make a cheaply made live action show and just slap Fairly Odd Parents on it. Airing almost five years after the show ended, Fairly Odd Parents Fairly Otter was an immediate flop. I didn't hear much about the show at all and had only seen it get attention when people were making fun of the fact that they tried to bring back Crocker in the form of some poorly animated teaser and then a strange live action rendition. In fact, it had such an insignificant viewer base, its second season was cancelled and the show was scrubbed from all streaming platforms, with the only way to watch the show is to watch it off of YouTube uploads or sketchy websites. Another notable show that got a middling reboot was Clone High in the form of a second season. The season is basically a revival of the show, for the fact that it took 20 years for it to get even a second season. And to that point, why? Who was this for? Now obviously it was revived because of the ever-growing cult following and buzzing praise the original show has been getting in the recent years. Season 1 had very good writing, great deadpan and witty humor, and really knew how to make fun of relationship dramas that were all the rage at the time. The continuation was very much the result of corporate people seeing the growing fandom and wanting to capitalize on it. But the reboot became a show that the original was parodying, with relationship drama being the focus of the new show instead of the butt of the joke that the old one was parodying. The characters felt very watered down and had barely any resemblance to what made them funny in the first place. They even straight up removed Gandhi because they thought he was a problematic stereotype. I mean, he's the most unique portrayal of a historical figure the show had and beloved by the show's fans, but I guess it's also for the best that they didn't ruin the memory of his character like they did the others. The Powerpuff Girls is another show that was rebooted and felt like the new creators wanted nothing to do with the original idea of the show. Instead focused more on the girls being in kindergarten and not them being superheroes. The show came off as the creators not caring for the show itself focusing more on the weird inside jokes than appealing to their intended audience. It ended up getting only three seasons before it was inevitably cut. There are plenty of other shows that have gotten reboots that tried to tell the original story in a more modern light. Voltron and Thundercats 2011 both had fairly positive ratings from their viewers. In Thundercats 2011's case, the show was praised for expanding on the world and characters of the original show. The writing and story were interesting and it had a lot of potential to go pretty far with ratings themselves seen as successful by Cartoon Network standards. But after the first season, the show went into hiatus, and then was eventually confirmed by the creator to be cancelled. Nobody knows exactly why, but considering how Cartoon Network runs, toy sales were probably not up to their standards and the show was likely too expensive to keep running without supplemental income. Which is a shame too, because a lot of people really liked the show and wanted to see where it would go from there. Voltron had a pretty good thing going with Netflix, getting four full seasons and two split ones, marking eight seasons total. It was very well acclaimed, receiving high scores across the board for all seasons. I can't think of anything truly negative about the show, outside of increased use of filler plot in the later seasons, and the eventual convoluted story that ended up getting into after the original plot finished. The fanbase was extremely toxic though, getting to a point where they would send death threats to the creators because the people they shipped together weren't actually a thing in the show. If a fanbase ends up being that bad, then yeah, I'd say let the show die. <laughs> Be Cool Scooby-Doo is arguably one of my favorite iterations of the Scooby-Doo franchise. Instead of leaning heavily into the more serious mystery solving like other reboots, the show instead leaned in the opposite direction and tried to do what Scooby-Doo did best, and that's comedy. I think the show pulled off comedy very well, but because of how the show looked, it ended up being mocked by people for how the characters were designed, comparing it to Family Guy or American Dad in terms of style. 
it upsettingly only got two seasons until it was canceled. Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is another strong reboot, with arguably some of the best animation to exist in an American cartoon. The designs are top-notch, really giving each of the turtles a unique look to them and making them identifiable with their character traits. And while I haven't really seen much of the show myself, what I have seen has been very good, and many of the fight scenes I catch on Twitter or TikTok when they make their rounds are always stunning. The only real criticism I've seen are the redesigns of April looking more like a kid and Splinter being a fat rat instead of a wizened old man rat. But just like all the other reboot attempts, it wasn't very popular and inevitably got cancelled by Nick after the second season. Which, if you haven't noticed already, most of these shows end up getting cancelled pretty early on in their lifespans due to poor reception. Even the franchise giant that is Spongebob had its spin-offs of Camp Coral and the Patrick Star Show end abruptly due to poor reception. Though, while making this video, I have heard the Patrick Star Show might still be continuing, but that's yet to be confirmed. I don't know if it's because of poor advertisement for the shows, or the fact the idea of a reboot or spinoff just sounds better than actually getting it made, but it looks like most of these reboots and spinoffs normally fail because of their possible expectations set by both the core audience and the corporations that want to see instant success. The only ways I can see reboots being deemed successful is if the new series goes the route of Teen Titans Go, and that they remove themselves so far from the original show that they become their own thing. Having characters just kind of be the mediums for situations. And while Teen Titans Go is very poorly received by the original Teen Titans audience, so much so that the writers made the episodes calling the original audience stupid babies, it still managed to garner an entirely new audience of younger kids that had no attachment to the original show at all, creating a more successful spin-off that's arguably more popular than the original. There are some older fans that still enjoy hate watching the show, and the writers are well aware of that. So much so, they sometimes create episodes specifically dedicated to calling them out or making fun of them. They even went out of their way to make an episode about another show called Thundercats Roar, and how the people who hated that show are dumb and that the reboot is a worthy successor of the original Thundercats series, taking the time to even spit in the face of the other two failed reboots. Ironically though, Thundercats Roar was cancelled after a single season, never to be seen again. Teen Titans Go is still going on though, and probably the longest running reboot airing right now. The other way I can see a reboot or spinoff seem successful is just by not caring about the numbers, but instead make a show or movie for the original audience that grew up with the original show. Fiona and Cake, The Invader Zim Movie, Rocco's Modern Life The Movie, and Adventure Time Distant Lands are all things I would consider very strong, successful reboots or spinoffs. Each of these tried their best to remain as faithful to the original material as possible, maintaining the style, sense of humor, and character tropes of the OG material. And while of course there are some modern differences in the newer stuff, it's really hard to maintain a perfectly identical writing style after nearly a decade. Things were bound to change, but it was very obvious that the writers and voice actors tried everything in their power to bring back the nostalgic feel of the original shows. Each of them were very well received by viewers and sung with high praises from the critics. And while we may never see a reboot of these shows ever again, the current stuff ends on a good enough note that I feel fans are just happy to have what they have and ended up getting in the first place. In terms of Rocco's modern life and distant lands, they ended up in a way that I felt like a proper send-off for those characters, and provided enough of a fun romp and closure to finally put the series to rest. So, back to the original questions. Are reboots and spin-offs any good? Well, evidence shows that most of them usually end up getting cancelled after the initial two seasons, rarely getting the chance to find its footing. This is normally due to poor audience reception or the inability to meet the high expectations the show had by the corporate suits who wanted to see instant success. So from a business standpoint, no, reboots and spin-offs aren't really good. But are reboots and spin-offs any good from an audience standpoint? Well, I guess that depends on what you're talking about. Shows like Velma are a disaster, with the writers having such a big ego they would rather mock older fans and make awful out-of-place political jokes rather than create something interesting. But on the opposite side of the spectrum, shows like Rise of the TMNT, Distant Lands, Voltron, and Thundercats have more than proven that the reboots can be good, sometimes even better than the original. But it's more so a mixed bag in which the quality of these reboots depend on the passion behind it. 
If writers and producers love their show and have respect for the original material, it's very likely to come out good. If it's corporate nothing burger, then it's pretty obvious that it'll be bad. In terms of the new Fairly Odd Parents reboot, A New Wish, I have high hopes for it. It's a really fresh take on the show that's very obviously been dead in the water for quite a few years, and I feel like it's been able to breathe new life into the Fairly Odd Parents franchise as a whole. A New Wish is very obviously trying to be its own show, taking it slower with the humor, changing up the art style, introducing plenty of new and old characters without feeling like they're trying to appeal to nostalgia. It's a breath of fresh air, and I hope they get renewed for a few more seasons. I would like to thank everyone that's made it this far in the video. If you want to see more content like this, please let me know by leaving a comment below. And if you like what I do, be sure to subscribe so I can talk about future videos that I make. Coming back into YouTube after so long has been very daunting, and I think if I just do what I enjoy and talk about stuff that comes to mind, I'll be able to keep creating. I know it's been pretty daunting so far, and I kind of took a small mini break for four, four weeks, Jesus, but I'm still going to be creating from now on. Until next time.